plans to move the Kemper Memorial are shut down. The 2005 Town of Mamanic budget is set. MTA commuter costs just keep going up. We've got news on more. Don't miss the dates to sign up for Flint Park Day Camp. And come see some local thespians. Hello and welcome to Larchmont Mamanic Community News, our first news show of 2005. I'm Sven Oehme. And I'm Maura Carlin. Our top story, a court says no to moving the Kemper Memorial. As you may recall, the Mamaroneck School District had plans to move and reconfigure the Kemper Memorial Park at the Mamaroneck High School on Boston Post Road to make room for badly needed new ball fields and had even received approval for partial funding by the community in the last school budget vote. Richard Cantor, grandson of Adolph and Helen Kemper, who donated the park to the school district in honor of Lieutenant Richard Kemper and the other students and former students who died serving in World War II, objected, as did other community members and students, and took the matter to court. On January 6th, New York Supreme Court Justice Orazio Bel excuse me, Bellantoni issued a decree prohibiting the school district from moving the park. The decree granted legal standing to Mr. Cantor to enforce the terms of the gift by his grandparents and then went on to find that the proposed changes violate the specific covenants of the deed. The Mamaroneck Board of Education issued a press release expressing its disappointment in the decision and stating that the district has suspended further activity related to the proposed relocation of the Kemper Memorial. But the board is reviewing its legal and other options. We'll keep you posted. Voters in Larchmont and Mamaroneck are likely to head to the polls in February to fill a seat on the Westchester Board of Legislators that has become unoccupied when George Latimer moved to Albany. Latimer, a Democrat, was elected to the State Assembly and started to serve in the Assembly on January 1st. In his former district, Mamaroneck Town Councilwoman Judith Myers is the only Democrat so far who has declared that she'd be interested in running on her party's ticket for a seat on the Westchester Board of Legislators. The Republicans are still looking for a candidate, and according to reports, candidates currently include Larchmont trustee Liz Neuer-Feld, former Mernick Village trustee Christy Derecco, and Rye Councilman Franklin Chu. As the new State Assembly took over on January 1st, Ronald Tochi, who served in the Assembly for New Rochelle for 20 years, was given a newly created post in the administration of New York State Governor George Pataki. He will serve as the State Labor Department Deputy Commissioner of Veterans Affairs. In his new position, he will receive a salary of $117,000 per year. And this is a significant increase over his salary as an assemblyman and also as chairman of the Veterans Affairs Committee. The amount he earned during that time was $92,000 annually. Last month, the town of Mamaroneck passed its budget for calendar year 2005. The town committed to retaining the level of services consistent with residents' wishes as expressed in last summer's survey. The cost, well, taxes will be going up 6.6%, which is down slightly from the fall projections of 7.3%. According to Town Administrator Steve Altieri, the actual increase is lower due to two factors, increase in revenues and readjustments in expenses. And the board reminds residents to shop locally since the town receives its fair share of sales tax revenues allowed by Westchester County. Some new laws were changed in New York State at the beginning of 2005 and with the beginning of the year the minimum wage in New York State increased from $5.15 to $6 an hour. Two more increases are scheduled on 10 a, until a new minimum wage for workers in New York State is reached on January 1st, 2007 at $7.15 per hour. Another law that is new on the books requires skateboarders under the age of 14 to wear helmets. Skateboarders are also prohibited from hanging on to moving cars. Candidates for school boards need to report campaign contributions that exceed $500 to the school district. 
A new law also prohibits the possession of wild animals such as monkeys, tigers, and snakes as pets. Children who were born on or after January 1, 2005 will have to be immunized against whooping cough and tetanus. New York State has introduced some tax reductions. A uh, commodities tax on electricity and on natural gas will be eliminated. And this is expected to save commercial and residential energy customers somewhere between 50 to 100 million dollars. The tax rate will drop from 7.375% to 7.25% for married taxpayers filing jointly and earning between 150,000 to 500,000 dollars, single heads of households making 125,000 to 500,000 dollars, and single taxpayers making 100,000 to 500,000 dollars will be affected by these changes. And there are more changes coming here at home, or should I say school. A changing of the guard, the Marinick School Superintendent, Dr. Sherry King, and Assistant Superintendent of Operations, Sarah Tate, both just announced plans to retire at the end of the school year. Dr. King, who joined the Mamaroneck School District in February 1996, plans to pursue her work in education in the National Forum as Director of Special Projects for the National Educational Improvement Organization, America's Choice, which is a subsidiary of the not-for-profit National Center on Education and the Economy. During Dr. King's tenure, the district saw many changes and improvements, including creation of a grade 678 middle school at the Homics, development and publication of a new district-wide curriculum, the integration of new technologies, major facility renovation and building projects, and the assemblage of one of the most respected educational staffs in the region. Cecilia Felscher, president of the Mamaroneck Board of Education, referred to Dr. King's exceptional leadership and vision, stating that we'll miss her but are very excited for her opportunity. The school board has begun a search for candidates and expects to have Dr. King's successor in place after the end of the school year. At the same time, Sarah Tate, the assistant superintendent of operations, will also retire and a search for her successor will begin shortly. Ms. Tate has been with the district since 1990 and was responsible for overseeing the business operations of the district, including supervision of facilities, capital construction, transportation, technology, and data processing. Ms. Tate also handled the preparation and management of the school budget. Now, the financial condition of the school district is strong, with a AAA bond rating from Moody's, and the budget itself is an award-winning document, recognized in 2004 by the Association of School Business Officials International. A major cleanup effort is going to start at Westchester County Airport. A dump that had been used to restore to store everything from tree stumps to asphalt to construction debris will be cleaned for about one million dollars. An issue here is the uh, close proximity to the Kensico Reservoir. The cleanup project is currently held up because an OK from New York City is still pending. The New York City Department of Environmental Protection needs to issue a permit for the cleanup. Once that permit has been issued, the cleanup operation will start. And at the end of the cleanup, a watertight seal will be put over the area of the dump. Mamarina commuters, if you use MTA-owned parking lots, the cost is going up. Effective February 1, permit holders for the MTA lots on the New Haven line will pay $471, which for the Mamaroneck station amounts to a 7% increase. Parking rates at many stations in Westchester will go up between 5 and 47%. And while the New Haven line will have the highest charge, Irvington commuters face the largest percentage increase. But if you already have your 2005 parking permit, you won't feel the pain for another year. And if you use the MTA-owned meters, you'll need to kick in another quarter. Now, these increases come on the heels of ticket fare hikes, hikes which go into effect this March. A group of thieves seems to be active in our area targeting stores. In early January, the three thieves, two men and a woman, entered a, a store on Mamanek Avenue. One of the men allegedly th uh, bought an item and gave the storekeeper a lower amount than the item was priced at. When the store attendant went after the purchaser, the other two people allegedly took $7,000 from the cash tray. The store attendant discovered that right after he returned from going after the purchaser, and similar incidents have occurred in White Plains and in Harrison. No further information is available at this time, but in all cases, the thieves seem to have followed a very similar plan. 
And news of another local award, a scholarship. Lachmann Manor Community News reporter Amy Schachtel has the details. Amy, it's my pleasure to be here and represent my club, that's the uh, Rotary Larchmont Club. Rotary is a terrific organization, and I think before I come to the scholarship, let me take a few seconds to tell our audience about the organization of Rotary. It's a hundred-year-old organization completely involved in community and social service. We are celebrating our hundredth year this year. 2005 is our hundredth year, a centennial. And our focus is just community service. So that's something I thought we must let our audience know, and they have a role to play. Each one can contribute. Let me come to the ambassadorial scholarship. This is a program offered by the Rotary, and it's a one-year-long program. The student or the applicant has to be a person who resides in the community. So if we have somebody in Larchmont, only he or she can apply to the scholarship. So we have been, we are very fortunate. We are almost celebrating that our candidate, who we started the drill in 2003, and she has finally gotten selected. How many she lives in Larchmont. On the overall, I don't know how many from the rest of the, I mean, there's so many all over the, uh, all over the country, in, in fact, all mm -hmm. over the world. But from our district, I think they were around 10 or 12. And by district, I mean district 7230. And Rotary has its own districts. This is Manhattan, Bronx, Staten Island, Bermuda, and Westchester. And this district, our candidate from Larchmont, has been selected, is Justina Kavanaugh. She has been selected and she goes this year for a one-year scholarship. And let me tell you, the Rotary gives the applicant $25,000. That's, That's a big sum. And the student uses it for research, for further growth. The basic idea, as the name applies, is ambassadorial scholar. The person goes to another country, another host country, the country has to have a Rotary Club. There are a few countries in the world, unfortunately, which don't have Rotary Clubs. So, Wika, okay? from yeah. what I understand, you were a member of the Rotary in another country, too. That's right. I have been Rotary for the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's a mission. It's a passion. I want to give it my best. And let me tell you, this is not a club you can just join. You're invited to join. Somebody finds, oh, there's a doctor who has just come in, and he's an ENT person, and we don't have an ENT person. Let's go and invite him to the Rotary <laughs> and tell him, do you want to become part of us? So yeah. I joined Rotary 10 years back, and before we relocated to the US last in 2003, I was the president for my club. I understand And now. Rotary did not take ladies <laughs> a few years back. So now it's, yeah. For people in the community that would like to get involved, know more about what you're doing, if they want to contribute their time. Oh, yes. Please, how do they find you? The best resource we have right now is the Rotary website. It's www.rotary.org. Get a history lesson from a former Mamaroneck High School teacher. Larchmont Mamaroneck Community News reporter Mike Witch teaches us when and where. Lorna Miner, a former social studies teacher at Mamaroneck High School, will speak at the Larchmont Mamaroneck League of Women Voters Luncheon, January 28th at the Orienta Beach Club. Her topic will be two-term presidencies since World War II. As a former teacher at MHS myself, I know how respected and admired a teacher she was, and a darn good speaker, if I might add, for more than 30 years. The luncheon starts at 12.30 and is open to the public. The cost is $35. You can reserve a seat via email to s-a-r-a-h-e-g at optonline.net. Again, there's an address on your screen. You can send payment to the League of Women Voters of Larchmont and Mamaroneck. Their address, P.O. Box 811, Larchmont, New York, 10538. Reporting for Larchmont and Mamaroneck Community News, I'm Michael Witch. Sad news about the passing of another former Mamanac High School teacher. Larchmont Mamanac Community News reporter Amy Schachtel has the story. Dr. Harry Simon, a former and popular science teacher at Mamanac High School, passed away on December 18th at the age of 73. 
Dr. Simon received his undergraduate degree from Cornell University in 1952 and Doctorate of Education from NYU in 1968. He served in the Korean War as a member of the United States Army. After retiring from the Maranek High School, he moved to Florida, where he continued to teach as a professor at Palm Beach Community College. For those of us who knew him, we will miss him. For Larchmont Mamarna Community News, I'm Amy Shacktail. And the art world lost a local star. Here with more is Larchmont Mamarna Community News reporter Mike Witch. A sad note in the news, artist and resident Alton Toby passed away January 4th at age 90. He was a longtime resident of Larchmont and an internationally known artist and muralist. Mr. Toby created several murals at the Smithsonian Institute as well as dozens of other public places all over the world. I had a chance to interview him back in the late 1980s on this very channel. He was an illustrator for hundreds of books and other publications and was a founder of the Culvalinear School of Painting. A notable historian and art educator, he was involved in various nonprofit organizations. He held a post of president of the National Society of Mural Painters, Artists' Equity of New York, and the Mamaronek Artists Guild. During his lifetime, he received numerous awards for his artwork, including the WPA Murals Award, the Edwin Abbey Mural Award, and the Linder Memorial Award, to name a few. His commitment to research, science, and history helped earn him a career as an illustrator for Life magazine, 305 paintings for the Golden Books of History of the United States, and for paintings in numerous other books and periodicals. Our condolences to his wife and family. Reporting for Larchmont and the Marina Community News, I'm Michael Witch. If you plan to send children to Flint Park this summer, listen up. Early registration for Flint Park Day Camp is early this year. It is now January 24th to February 4th. Parents must register their children at Village Hall. For those parents unable to make it during the day, there will be an evening registration session during the board meeting on February 7th, which starts at 7.30 p.m. The camp will be bigger this year to accommodate more children after people were turned away last year. This year, if more than 240 children sign up, there will be a lottery for openings. A small amount of children register during the early registration period. The Recreation Committee will continue to accept registrations on a first-come, first-served basis. In order to register a child, you must complete a form listing this child's immunization history. The forms will be available in advance at the Village Hall so that parents can fill them out at home. Payment is due at the time of registration unless the child is in need of a scholarship. The fees for the camp are being raised by $50 this year to cover expenses. If the child is entering the first grade, the camp runs from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. and the fee is $385. The child is entering the second to eighth grades. The camp runs from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. and the cost is $455. Local talent abounds in the production of Seussical the Musical put on by the Playgroup Theater for Children and Teens. Nearly half of the 42 actor cast is from our Larchmont Mamarinic community. Join the Cat in the Hat, Horton, The Grinch and more on Saturday, January 22nd at 8 p.m and Sunday, January 23rd at 2 p.m. and 7 p.m. at the New White Plains Performing Arts Center for this entertaining musical. You'll be amazed at the breadth of the kids' abilities. For tickets and information, call Playgroup Theater at 946-4433. Oh, the things you will see. Larchmont Mamarina Community News reporter Amy Schachtel tells of some disturbing graffiti at the high school. Graffiti was found in the high school with a swastika and a phrase Che Guevara lives. It was found at the Mamaronek High School in the early morning on January 12th. Located on the plasterboard near the assistant principal's office, it was apparently painted sometime between 3 p.m. on January 11th and 5.30 a.m. on the next day. When it was discovered by the high school custodial staff, Joan Rosen, a school district spoke spokesperson was quoted in the journal news as saying there is no indication of racial racial tension in the school at all the school was open until 8 p.m. on January January 11th due to a boys basketball game against White Plains 
For Larchmont Mamarinac Community News, I'm Amy Schachtel. Midterm exams are coming up at Mamarinac High School. Larchmont Mamarinac Community News reporter Aminia Carrison talks about student prep. Parents, let your kids breathe. This time of the year is the month where all teenage high school students are taking midterms and getting themselves all worked up and nervous. Yes, us teenagers are under a lot of stress. For us students to succeed and do well on the midterms, we must all relax and get focused. Just follow these four steps and you will all do well. One, you need plenty of sleep. Two, make sure you look over all your old homeworks, tests, and notes. Study a little each night. Three, eat an adequate, well-balanced breakfast in the morning, bring your number two pencils, and lastly, go to school with confidence knowing that you want to succeed and pass the test. And I'm sure that you will all do fine. Good luck. From Larchmont Mamarinac Community News, I'm Amani Carrison signing off for LMC TV News. And that's it for this week's edition of Larchmont Mamarinac Community News. If you want to see the show again, you can. It's on every weekday night at 7 p.m. We record one show each week and it's replayed on this channel, LMC TV, channel 75. Or if you want to request to see it, you can call LMC TV after 4 in the afternoon during the week at 6808 and ask to see the news show and they'll try to put it on at a time that's convenient for you to watch. And this reminder, this news program is an all-volunteer effort and we could use a few more volunteers either behind the scenes or as a reporter. Or maybe you'd like to shoot video. Whatever the case, we need you. In short, if you want to volunteer to help us put this program on, we have something for you to do. Stop by some Thursday night, the LMC TV studios, and see how we do what we do. The LMC TV studios are in the Mamaroneck High School, the Palmer Avenue side, just up the stairs from the landmark Walters hot dog stand. We get things started around 7 p.m. and we'd love to see you. Also, if you have any comments or suggestions or some video of an event that you would like us to put on this news show, bring it to the studio or write to us at Larchmont Mamaroneck Community News in care of LMC TV, 1 Library Lane, Mamaroneck, New York, 10543. Thanks again for watching Larchmont Mamaroneck Community News. I'm Maura Carlin. And I'm Sven Ulmer. See you next week. changes at United Hospital are starting to infect our area. And the time has run out for another local newspaper. I'll have the report. In the wake of the Kemper decision, Mamanac High School still faces a sports field shortage. Attention all motorists, Westchester County is adding another $25 surcharge for tickets issued on patrol by county police. Listen up, Dr. new news concerning noise. We have highlights from the Martin Luther King Award Show and the numbers on how many people in our area are using their cell phones illegally. Those stories and more right here on this edition of Largemont Mamaroneck Community News. Hello and welcome to Largemont Mamaroneck Community News. I'm Sven Oehmer. I'm Kate Fahey. And our top story, a Mamaroneck off-duty police officer, Star Scott Gross, was shot in Harrison in an attempted robbery of a bar. The off officer, who has been on the Mamaroneck police force for 20 years, was shot in the arm and hip and was released from the hospital a couple of hours after the incident. The officer was not armed at the time of the shooting. The incident took place at the top of the Hill Bar and Restaurant, which is located at 60 Halstead Avenue. 
The robber apparently had asked everybody at the bar to lay down behind the counter and the people were afraid that the robber might shoot them all. The bartender then tried to distract the robber and Scott Gross took advantage of this distraction and ran out the back door to get help. The robber went after Gross, shot a couple of times and hit him twice. He was last seen running on Halstead Avenue in the right direction. None of the five people who were in the bar at the time of the incident were injured. Gross is on medical leave since January of 2004 because of a back injury and has filed for disability retirement benefits in May of last year. His application is still under review. This case took another twist when a lawyer who represents former Manic village, uh, village police officers who have been suing the village in a dispute about discipl disciplinary charges issued a statement concerning Officer Gross. The attorney, Jonathan Lovett, said that Gross had a financial stake in the bar and he had been observed frequently checking the identity of people coming to the bar. Mamanic police Chief Edward Flynn said that he had no knowledge of Gross being in any way involved in the top of the hill bar and restaurant. Under state law, police officers are prohibited from working or from having ownership in any kind of establishment where liquor is being sold for any on-site consumption. Among the people who were at the bar at the time of the shooting, Gross is perceived as the person who saved their lives when the robber had them lay down behind the bar and was apparently going to shoot them. In the case, Westchester Crime Stoppers has now offered a reward of $5,000 for any information leading to the arrest of the suspect in the robbery at top of the hill bar in Harrison. The incident took place at 2 a.m. in the morning on January 13. A description of the robber has been released. He's black, about 25 to 30 years old, between 5 feet 9 inches to 6 foot tall, thin, medium build. And according to the witnesses, he was wearing dark clothing and a black half ski mask, which covered the lower portion of his face. Crime Stoppers can be reached at 1 800 898 TIPS. And in another police story, Larchmont Marina Community News reporter Mike Witch gives us some new information on the four police officers who, were, who are suing the village of Mimaranek. The word from the Mimaranek Village Police Department. Four officers who were earlier found guilty of charges brought against them by the department have now been dismissed from the force. This according to Village Police Lieutenant Mary Matero, executive officer. She identified the four as Sergeant Peter Monticelli and Patrolman John DeCicchio, Jeremy Skian, and Paul Michelizzi. The officers and the charges against them were the subject of lengthy public hearings which were televised by LMC-TV starting in July of 2003 and continued through last year. Lieutenant Matero said that there are still lawsuits filed by the officers in the courts. In fact, LMC-TV is involved in one. Nevertheless, she explained, the four officers were dismissed from the Village Police Department effective Friday, January 21st, completing the penalty phase of the proceedings. Reporting for Larchmont, the Marinette Community News, I'm Michael Witch. The possible closing of United Hospital in Portchester has residents and local officials concerned. Over the past five years, Westchester County has lost three hospitals. Are new advances in medicine like orthoscopic surgery and in-office care for minor surgery eliminating the need for a long hospital stay? If United Hospital does close, residents of our area will have to rely on White Plains, New Rochelle, Greenwich, or even Stanford hospitals. According to Town of Mamaroneck's Coordinator of Emergency Preparedness, Mike Liverzani, EMS takes an average, an average of 600 residents a year to United Hospital. Mr. Liverzani has let the Town of Mamaroneck in on his concerns, and at the top of his list is the longer distance that EMS will have to travel if United closes. For now, United Hospital will keep its emergency room open. The final say on what happens to United Hospital comes from the New York State Department of Health. We here at Larchmont Memorial Community News will keep you informed of any changes. The issue of day laborers has been a hot topic in Mamanic Village for many years. Until recently, day laborers had congregated in Columbus Park, where it was fairly easy for contractors to identify them and give them jobs. But because of traffic jams and complaints from neighbors, this practice was not acceptable, acceptable anymore to the village board. Day laborers now have to go to a garage at Van Rand's Place Park, where they have to wait for contractors to hire them. 
but it's the experience of the day laborers that the contractors are not really going to this garage because of the presence of patrols by village officers. The Hispanic Resource Center of Larchman and Bamaranek, which is a non-profit entity, is trying to help the immigrants. The center is attempting to have the employers of the day laborers go to the garage and pick up the day laborers there. Bamaranek Village Mayor Trifoletti has said that up to 300 day laborers had been waiting at Columbus Park. And many of them had not been from Larchman or Bamaranek, but had come from the Bronx or other parts of the metropolitan area. It's the view of the village board that Mamernik does not have an obligation to take care of those day laborers. Larchmont Mamernik Community News reporter Mike Witch covered the, the Mamernik Larchmont Human Rights Commission 18th Annual Martin Luther King Award Ceremony, and here is his report. The Mamernik Larchmont Human Rights Commission presented Gerhard Spies this year's Martin Luther King Jr. Award last Wednesday. The occasion was the 18th annual program to honor the memory of Dr. King. Spees, a long-term volunteer with numerous community causes, was introduced by Rabbi Jeffrey Siegelman from the Westchester Jewish Center, where Spees is a member and an active volunteer. Explaining why he deserved this award, the commission said Gerhard Spees exemplifies the principles and dedication of Martin Luther King Jr. through his decades of volunteering with many community organizations and causes. Mr. Spees volunteers with the Larchmont and the Maranek Hunger Task Force distributing food to needy local families and with ELM, that's Employment Larchmont and the helping to secure jobs for area residents. And in the Westchester Jewish Center, he serves as cemetery president. The Human Rights Commission added that Mr. Spees' tireless involvement and dedication to improving the lives of many in need with compassion has increased awareness and involvement of others in the community, has inspired many, and will have lasting benefit. Entertainer Harry Belafonte was the guest speaker for the event held January 12th at the Emelin Theater. The Dream Revisited was the theme, and Dr. King's message was re-examined as still relevant today. Belafonte was a close associate and friend of Dr. King's, dating from the 1950s, and has himself been recognized worldwide for his contributions in the field of human rights. Here's some of what he had to say. He said, because of the nature of our history and our suffering, we had a moral strength and a place from which to see life, that if we use that experience and applied it to the goodness of this nation, we could save the soul of America. We will have to lead the nation to its moral honor. And we did that. It was not just us who were freed. Those in America who were our oppressors were also liberated. Others who had been struggling for a long time in the civil rights movement under our banner found their own courage and their own strengths. The women's movement, the environmentalists, ecumenical freedom, all sorts of Native Americans, everyone found their moment. The peace movement, the anti-war movement, everything flourished in America at that moment. And the resonance of that period was carried around the world. Africa heard it, China heard it, Asia, Latin America. What a remarkable thing that in just a few short years, everyone else in the world who watched what went on in this nation was so inspired by what, went, happened, what happened that soon our songs became their songs of freedom. It was Frank Ferrari, a town of Mamaroneck Human Rights Commissioner, who invited Belafonte to speak. They've been friends since the 1960s when both were involved in projects to promote development in Africa. Ferrari was also involved with last year's program that brought Andrew Young to Mamaroneck. LMC-TV cablecast the event live and will replay it in the coming weeks. For an exact time and channel, call LMC-TV. Their number, 381-2002. Reporting for Larchmont Mamaroneck Community News, I'm Michael Witch. Under a new noise ordinance in the village of Larchmont, clearer rules are being issued to regulate noise coming from gardening equipment or other sources. Leaf blowers and similar equipment will be permitted 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Saturday and 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Sunday. For a garden party or other special events, amplified music may be allowed. However, the owners of one or two family residences will have to obtain a special permit from the Larchmont chief of police. 
At the conclusion of a hearing on January 10, the village board enlargement adopted the new law. The large Mama Marina community has lost another local paper, The Times. Created by the Journal News, The Times covered our three local municipalities, our two school districts, and the daily lives and events in our community. This very new show, Larch Montmartre Community News, was created back in the late 80s because there were no other news organizations, newspaper, radio, or TV, covering our area. All the local newspapers during the 80s were bought out by big companies like the Gannett Company that owns over 100 newspapers, including the Journal News. The Soundview News, created by Mar Martinelli Publications, covered our area but has since shut down due to the death of its founder last year. The only newspaper left covering the large Mount Mamaroneck, Rye Neck areas is the Sound and Town Report, owned by the Hometown Media Group. Now we may only have one newspaper covering our area, but with the help of the internet, we can plug into municipal websites, electronic news sites on the web like the Larch Mount Gazette. Of course, you can always tune in right here to LMC TV Channel 75 and watch Larch Mount Mamaroneck Community News. According to Westchester County Executive Andrew Spano, motorists may be ticketed an additional $25 in addition to the regular fines when they are stopped by county police. The policy would apply to the Bronx River Parkway, the airport and county parks. These venues take about 10,000 tickets are issued per year and the total amount of revenues from the additional $25 surcharge would be $250,000 annually. Espano would also like to include the surcharge for tickets issued on the Hutchinson River, Sawmill River, and Cross County Parkways. These state highways are patrolled by county police. Malaranek High School might have lost Kemper Field, but there are a few creative ideas out there with poss possibly the correct solution to the sports field problem. For more, we tune to Large Montmartre Community News reporter Amy Schachtel. In the aftermath of the Kemperfield decision, the Mamaroneck School District and the youth programs of the community still have a shortage of playing fields. Adding artificial turf and lights to the high school field was a partial solution. The thought here was that practices could be spread out to later in the evening. Night games could be played, freeing up the fields during the day. Having artificial turf will allow for a longer use of the field. A natural field needs more downtime after a rain. Town of Mamaroneck Supervisor Valerie Moore O'Keefe has another idea. What about a sports field at Saxon Woods? A resolution was drawn up and all three municipalities are now on board. Will the county hear our plea? Last, year, last year's idea about the sports field off Old White Plains Road was shot down when the area was deemed too marshy. The county does have a role in providing fields for local communities. This past year, the county put in a field for White Plains near the Saxon Woods Pool, right near where the Mamaroneck is hoping to build one. Stay tuned for the search for more playing fields. For Larchmont Mamaroneck Community News, I'm Amy Schachtel. Do you often see people using their cell phones while driving? Do you wonder if the police ever give them tickets? Large Montmartre Community News reporter Mike Witch has the answers. Back in December, our three municipalities teamed up with the Westchester County Department of Public Safety and 24 other local police departments to crack down on motorists who use handheld cell phones while driving, a dangerous yet all too common practice. Countywide, police issued a total of 898 summonses during the week of December 13 to 19, according to Public Safety Commissioner Thomas Belfiore. This was the second such coordinated effort of police departments to enforce the state's cell phone and driving law. While figures from Mamaroneck Town and Larchmont Village were not available, Mamaroneck Village said they issued 66 tickets that week alone to drivers holding cell phones. And Police Lieutenant Mary Matero told me that in all of last year, they issued 594 summonses for the same offense. In April of 2001, Westchester County became one of the first municipalities in the nation to enact a law to regulate cell phone use while driving. This law was superseded later that year by a statewide ban. That calls for fines up to $100 for a first offense, $200 for a second, and $500 for subsequent offenses. County Commissioner Belfiore says 
Motorists need to understand that this is a safety issue, and police departments in Westchester take this law very seriously, adding, just as with seatbelt usage or speeding, drivers need to know there are penalties for not complying with the law. There's also an increased likelihood of accident or injury by using handheld cell phones while driving, he said. By the way, the greatest number of summonses, 248, were issued by the White Plains Police Department during the crackdown week last month. Reporting for Larchmont and the Marinette Community News, I'm Michael Witch. And that's it for this week's edition of Larchmont and Marinette Community News. If you want to see this news show again, you can. It's on every weekday night at 7 p.m. We record one show each week and it's replayed on this channel, LMC TV, channel 75. Or if you want to request to see it, you can call LMC TV after 4 in the afternoon during the week at 698-6808 and ask to see the news show. They will try to put it on at a time that's convenient for you to watch. And this reminder, this news program is an all-volunteer effort. We could use a few more volunteers either behind the scenes or as a reporter. Or maybe you'd like to, to shoot uh, some video. Whatever the case, we need you. In short, if you want to volunteer to help us put this program on, we have something for you to do. Stop by some Thursday night in the LMC TV studios and see how we do what we do. The LMC TV studios are in the Mimanek High School, the Palmer Avenue side, just up the stairs across from the landmark Walters Hot Dog Stand. And we get things started around 7 p.m. and we would love to see you. Also, if you have any comments or suggestions or some video of an event that you would like us to put on this new show, bring it to the studio or write us at Larchmont Marinette Community News in care of LMC TV, 1 Library Lane, Marinette, New York, 10543. Thanks again for watching Larchmont Marinette Community News. I'm Sven Ullmann. And I'm Kate Fahey. Okay, good job. Okay. George Latimer's seat on the county legislature. Budget talks begin in the village of Larchmont. There's a new child car seat law, and you may need to put your kid back in a booster seat. How you can voice your views on the search for a new school superintendent. And a new program to help you get fit this winter. Those stories and more coming up on this edition of Larchmont Mamaroneck Community News. Hello and welcome to Larchmont Mamana Community News. I'm Sven Ulme. And I'm Maura Carlin. Our top story. Democrat Judy Myers of Mamaroneck handily beat her Republican opponent Franklin Chu of Rye for the county legislator seat vacated by now Assemblyman George Latimer. The unofficial tally has Myers winning with 58 percent of the vote and Chu conceded on election night. Both candidates had focused on the need to lower county taxes, with Myers stressing a fight against unfunded mandates from the state. Myers' new constituency is the 7th District, which includes Rye, Mamaroneck, Larchmont, and a portion of New Rochelle. But only until the end of the year, which would have been the end of Latimer's term. For a full two-year term, Myers will have to run again in November. Meyer's election leaves a vacancy on the town of Mamaroneck board where she was serving her second four-year term as a councilwoman. The board is expected to replace her within the next couple of weeks. In more election news, the upcoming March 15 contests in the village of Larchmont will be uncontested. Local Republicans and Democrats held their party caucuses last month 
and each selected only one candidate, the incumbents Democrat Ann McAndrews and Republican Mike Wiener. Both parties are also endorsed Thea Beaver for Village Justice, as they did in 2002, so there will be no contest for that position either. Now, there may not be much campaigning in the village of Larchmont, but there will be a lot of work paring down the preliminary 2005-06 budget. Based on expense estimates, which look to add about $1.5 million, residents could be looking at a 15 to 20 percent tax increase, according to the Sound and Town report. But Mayor Ken Biallo says that won't happen. It's just the starting place to get the number down. The preliminary budget is due on March 20th, with a tentative budget due April 10th and the final budget to be adopted by April 30th. We'll keep you posted. Unemployment rates in Westchester County continue to drop in December of last year. In the county, the rate for December 2004 dropped to 3.5 percent. During the same period in 2003, the rate had been at 3.9 percent. The numbers for Putnam County are 2.9 percent for December 2004 compared to 3.1 percent December 2003. And as a comparison, the New York City unemployment rate for December 2004 was 6.1 percent. For December 2003, it was 8 percent. During the last months of 2004, 429,200 jobs were listed for Westchester County, an increase of 3,100 jobs compared with December of 2003. If you have children in your car, listen up. A new car seat law goes into effect in Westchester County in March. It requires children between the ages of four and six to be in booster seats. Now, we're all used to being able to give up the child seat when they hit four, but no more. The county says research shows that when children outgrow child safety seats, they are still not ready for adult seat belts and need booster seats for the transition period. Fines for violation will range from $25 to $100. The booster seat must meet the child's height, weight, and size according to the manufacturer's recommendations and generally are available at large toy and retail stores. Low-income families unable to purchase booster seats can call Westchester Safe Kids for assistance at 592-7575. Excuse me, 7555. And remember to buckle those kids up. The satisfaction of commuters on Metro North Railroad, especially those on the New Haven line, continues to decline. For the third time in a row, an annual survey of rider satisfaction showed a downward trend. The railroad switched to a new system in 2003, which rates service somewhat differently. Under the new system, 93 percent 93 in 2003 were somewhat satisfied with the service of the railroad. The overall satisfaction dropped to 89 percent for 2004. However, under the old system, which was used for the last time in 2003 and was based on a scale of 1 to 10, the railroad rated 6.9 in 2003, and that was down from 7.8 in 2002. The, this current survey for last year was taken in October and doesn't include the performance over this current winter period. The overall satisfaction with the New Haven line, the latest survey was down to 83%, much lower than on the other two lines. The Hudson and Harlem line, commuters are already experiencing new equipment, while on the New Haven line, the old trains are still in use. 75% 70 of the people who use the New Haven line are Connecticut residents, and because of the overall agreement between New York State and Connecticut, in this case, the state of Connecticut decides when to buy equipment for the New Haven line. Connecticut has not yet put aside any money in the current budget for buying new trains, and the new equipment on the New Haven line is not going to show up before a year or even two years from now. Any survey taken now on the New Haven line would most likely show results in overall satisfaction of riders below last year's level. Several incidents in late January resulted in major delays on the New Haven line during the rush hour, especially affecting our area. Well, it's not just the condition of trains and service that people complain about. In Mamarina, commuters are experiencing a rough ride and walk at the train station. The area of the train station is full of potholes and uneven pavement. The access road leading up to the parking spaces at the top of the train station and the parking lot itself are in terrible condition and resemble a testing area for all-wheel drive vehicles. 
Pedestrians also have to be very careful to avoid potholes, uneven pavement and, pavement and crumbling sidewalks. Repairs are scheduled for the near future. While it's not going to improve the overall satisfaction with the New Haven line for commuters, it should improve access to the train station. A new building is coming to our area. Here with more is Larchmont Mamana Community News reporter Brad Martz. At the February 7th Larchmont Planning Commission meeting, two projects were proposed. The first was a 59-unit apartment development on North Avenue. The apartment project was presented by Richard A. Esposito of Esposito Builders in Peekskill. Two three-story buildings will be constructed on North Avenue behind Palmer Avenue on property currently owned by Collins Brothers Movers. The buildings would look down on I-95 and the Metro North train tracks, so the developer would be requesting approval to build a noise reduction wall. Under the buildings would be parking for the tenants. This project was first proposed by Mr. Esposito to the planning board over a year ago. However, it has taken him this time to get the necessary concessions from the MTA, which owns adjacent property. Moderate income housing could be a part of this project, and this could be a major selling point to the commission because Larchman has been under consistent pressure to contribute to affordable housing in the area. There were concerns voiced by commission members regarding adequate access for emergency vehicles. However, Mr. Esposito assured the commission that the garage and the road would be more than adequate. It is the hope of Mr. Esposito and other supporters of the project that this development would be a direct enhancement of the area. Ultimately, the development could add many potential shoppers within walking distance to local Palmer area stores. The second project proposed at the Planning Commission meeting was announced by Commerce Bank and was greeted by many concerns. A Commerce Bank branch would replace Dom's Car Care at 107 Chatsworth Avenue on the corner of Franklin Avenue. The proposed bank would include a 29,000 square foot building with two drive through bays and six on-site parking slots. Commission members were very concerned about zoning and traffic problems. Commissioner Ralph Engel pointed out that the gas station's placement on Chatsworth predates many zoning restrictions in the village of Larchmont and that the new bank would violate all sorts of zoning laws including curb cuts, coverage and signage. Another concern was voiced by P Commissioner Chris Verney, quote, traffic driving around somebody's house will not be desired, end quote. In the response to these concerns, the bank's attorney, Janet Giris, commented that because Commerce Bank has extended hours, it does not generate as much peak hour traffic as other banks. What's in store for Commerce Bank and Larchmont is still undecided. The bank does not own the land yet, and the project plans showed to the commission were for illustrative purposes only. John Tolomer, senior vice president with Commerce Bank, stated that the bank's quote, goal is to cooperate with town officials for the mutual benefit of all parties, end quote. For Larchmont Mamarinick Community News, I'm Brad Martz. Some local third graders became Native Americans for a day. Larchmont Mamarinick Community News reporter Amy Schechtel interviews one of the teachers involved. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. I'm here with Jeanette Larva a third grade teacher from Murray Avenue School. And Jeanette, I understand you just completed a course with your third grade class about the local Indians, and I'd like you to tell us just a little bit of how that came to be. Okay, two years ago, the third grade teachers began a unit with the uh, students on the Eastern Woodland Indians. Those are the um, Indians from this region. So we wanted to make it um, to be as authentic as possible for them. So it would have meaning for them, so they'd be able to make connections in, into their daily lives today. Oh, that's very good. Mm -hmm. And also, were you telling them about the local history of local Indians right here in Westchester? Yes, we did that. Um, the Siwanoi Sy <laughs> Indians are a local tribe. Mm -hmm. They um, lived from Manhattan to the shore, to the Sound Shore, right. up to um, north, as far as Greenwich, maybe even further. And um, there are some local names. Really? Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a few? Yes, uh, Kensico is named after a Siwanoi chief named Ko Kensico. Oh, that's very interesting. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so that's how this whole 
thing began of finding out in the school that this would be a great project for the kids to do. And I believe you started with the fourth graders and then went to third graders? Yes, now it's part of the third grade curriculum. That's and what we wanted to do is we wanted to teach the children about the community. Mm -hmm. Third grade um, in social studies learns about the community of people. And so we learned about the Iroquois Nation, which was made up of five tribes and later became six. And from that, we narrowed it down um, to the local Siwanoi tribe. And third graders are nine-year-olds, right? They're eight and nine-year-olds. Eight and nine-year-olds. Mm -hmm. And as we were speaking before, you were telling me that one question that came up a lot with the kids is they wanted not so, well, also, finding out about the tribes and their lives, but what did the kids do? Yes, they want to know what it was it like to be a boy or girl during that time. And what were the things they found out? Well, we went on a class trip to mm -hmm. T-Town, which is in Millwood near Austin, and in that, it's a, nat it's a natural preserve. They have a, an authentic wigwam that was made, and the children sat in it, and we had a guide. We actually had about three or four teachers that, were, that are trained in Native American history, and the children learned about daily routines that children might participate in. Um, they, they learned what a boy or a girl might be doing since they didn't have schools. That's, ve that's very interesting. So then you took this all to an event, a great event that took yes. place right at the school. Yes. And that event had many different portions to it. You were mentioning to me that there was a storyteller, um, his yes. name Bob, Bob Reiser. Reiser. Yes, Okay, and he, he came. came? Yes, he came and he's a musician and he's a singer and he's a folk teller, a storyteller. Right. And so he taught the children some movements, some dances, a rain dance. Uh -huh. And uh, he also compared <laughs> two flutes, they were similar to a recorder. Yes, you were mentioning this to me, that the recorder, uh, a flute, is in many different tribes throughout the world as one of their first forms of communication? That's right. He said that um, in the northeast woodland area, which is right here, when the colonists came, they would hear sounds, and they assumed that it was the, the sounds of animals, mm -hmm. but it was really the, the, the music from the recorders. That was a way for the, um, the Native Americans to communicate with each other. Well, that's an interesting fact that I didn't know. Mm -hmm. um, so, as a teacher, watching your students, going through all of this, did you find, what did you find was something that really stuck out that the children picked up from this? There were about three really important things. One was the role of community and family. Mm -hmm. They learned about the, uh, the main dwelling was called the longhouse. And within the longhouse, four or five families were able to live. And um, they learned that every person, every member of the family had a role and they depended on each other. So it was, there was a teamwork. The second part was that there was not one part of, of uh, any article or material that they used that they used everything, nothing was wasted. So they were very ecologically sophisticated. Yes, yes. And then one day we were on a class trip, on another trip, and it was freezing outside, and the <laughs> children started thinking, well, wow, what was it like? You know, when they lived in the longhouse. Perfect. So, um, it was so they exciting. were able to adapt it and look at their lives mm -hmm. today from what they yes. learned in the yes. history. It was exciting because the children learned that there was no electricity, there were no machines, mm -hmm. and how do these people live? Well, I tell you, Jeanette, th this is a very enlightening and enriching program for the kids. And I'm glad you began it. And I'm glad that uh, all of these things take place for nine-year-olds to learn now for when they become adults. So thank you very oh, much. Thank you. But you I, know? Mean, I have one thing I want to say, though, is yes. that this event at school would not be possible if it hadn't been for the parents. You know, we have um, a wonderful support with the PTA. And uh, it's, it's a teamwork within the school also. Oh, thank you so much for bringing that up. Mm -hmm. That is true. The PTA is very important. And the parents getting involved yes. helps you do these kind of projects. So once again, oh. thank you so much. <laughs> and you. keep up the marvelous work. Oh, thank you very much. If sure. the School District searches for a new school superintendent, you can get involved. Here with more is Large Mermanic Community News reporter Brad Martz. The Mamaroneck School Board has invited the community to get involved with their superintendent search. On January 19th and 20th, focus group meetings were held as part of the search process. If you missed those meetings but are still interested in being a part of the selection process, the school district wants to hear from you. 
What are some unique characteristics and strengths of the Mamaroneck schools? What do you feel are the most pressing issues and challenges facing the district now and in the future? What professional and personal attributes are essential for successful leadership within the school district? If you have any input regarding these questions, mail your suggestions to Rose Marie Coletti, the Assistant Superintendent for Administration and Personnel at 1000 West Boston Post Road, Mamaroneck, New York, 10543 or fax them to 914-220-3026. You can also email comments to board at mamkschools.org. For Larchmont Mamaroneck Community News, I'm Brad Martz. If you're looking to get fit, Westchester County and the Westchester Mall have launched a new walking club called Be Fit at the Westchester Mall, and it officially got underway February 18th. Walks will be held Tuesdays and Fridays from 8 to 10 a.m., and they meet at the Horse Fountain on Retail Level 2 near Creighton Barrel. The walks are led by a County Parks Department employee who's also a registered dietitian. On the first Friday of the month, there will be special guest speakers and fitness and, on, on fitness and nutrition issues. The first talk will be on March 4th about Tai Chi. Club members get free pedometers and logbooks to track the number of miles they have walked. And there are prizes for walkers who complete 25, 50, and 100 miles at the mall. And don't worry about parking. On club days, registered walkers get free parking between 8 a.m. and noon. For more information, you can visit www.westchestergov.com backslash fitness or call 864-7144. The village of Mamanek Fire Department is taking on the police department, or vice versa, in basketball, and all for a good cause. They're holding a benefit basketball game with proceeds going to help the family of five-year-old Victoria Violi defray the cost associated with her November 2004 heart transplant. Victoria's parents are lifetime Mamanek residents. Mom Karen graduated from Rynek High School, and Dad Anthony graduated from Mamanek High School. Anthony Violi has worked for the village of Larchmont for 16 years and also has donated 24 years as a volunteer firefighter in the village of Mamanek. The matchup is Friday, March 4 at 7 p.m. at Rynek High School. Donations will be accepted at the door at admission. Food and raffles also will be available for purchase. See the shootout between the two departments and help a neighbor. Here's another event you won't want to miss. The annual Mamaroneck Avenue School International Fair on March 5th at the Mamaroneck Avenue School from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. rain or shine. There'll be around the world fun, food, games, arts and crafts and more. The fair also features a silent auction, karaoke corner and cakewalk. For further information, you can contact the fair coordinator, Lisa Budetti, at 381-3896. And that's it for this week's edition of Larchmont Mamaroneck Community News. If you want to see this news show again, you can. It's on every weekday night at 7 p.m. We record one show each week, and it's replayed on this channel, LMC TV, channel 75. Or if you want to request to see it, you can. Call LMC TV after 4 in the afternoon during the week at 698-6808 and ask to see the news show. They'll try to put it on at a time that's convenient for you to watch. And this reminder, this news program is an all-volunteer effort and we could use a few more volunteers, either behind the scenes or as a reporter. Or maybe you'd like to shoot video. Whatever the case, we need you. In short, if you want to volunteer to help us put this program on, we have something for you to do. Stop by some Thursday night in the LMC TV studios and see how we do what we do. The LMC TV studios are in the Mamanek High School, the Palmer Avenue side, just up the stairs across from the landmark Walters Hot Dog Stand. You get things started around 7 p.m. and we would love to see you. Also, if you have any comments or suggestions or some video of an event that you'd like us to put on this new show, bring it to the studio or write to us at Larchmont Mamaroneck Community News in care of LMC TV, 1 Library Lane, Mamaroneck, New York, 10543. Thanks again for watching Larchmont Mamaroneck Community News. I'm Sven Wimmer. I'm Maura Carlin. See you next time.
commuting just got more difficult and more expensive. Good environmental news for the village of Amaranek. A big donation and some big grants. A very special project by some local kids. And Shakespeare in Mamaroneck. Those stories and more coming up on this edition of Larchmont Mamaroneck Community News. Hello and welcome to Larchmont Mamaroneck Community News. I'm Kate Fahey. And I'm Maura Carlin. Our top story. There are rough roads ahead for local bus riders as the Beeline Bus Transit Workers Union went on strike against the bus line operator, Liberty Lines, in the early morning of March 3rd, leaving about 55,000 Westchester commuters without a ride. Management and the union were unable to work out a new contract before the prior agreement expired on February 28th, but extended the strike deadline 48 hours because of the recent snowstorm that hit Westchester. Key issues are pensions, overtime, and health benefits. Well, what does this mean for riders? Well, scrambling to find rides to work and school. Westchester County has set up park and ride locations for car pooling, but about 75% of uh, bus riders don't have cars. But if you're interested, you can find out the exact locations by calling the Beeline Information Center at 914-813-7777 or checking out the website www.westchestergov.com, as well as for getting information use on using Metro North. And as for our local kids who rely on the Beeline buses to get to and from school, you too are going to have to find alternative, alternative transportation and maybe some carpools there too. And if you thought riding the rails would be an easier trip, just be prepared to dig deeper, especially if you're reverse commuting from New York City to work in Westchester. Effective March 1st, new higher rates went into effect on Metro North and on the price of 30-day Metro cards. But some policy changes are hitting the purse as well. Reverse commuters will no longer ride for, for off-peak fares going to work between 5.30 and 9 a.m. It will be the same full fare paid by those heading to New York City. And if you thought you could save by using the Mail and Ride ticket program, buy monthly ticks by mail, you'll still save, but you'll save less as the discount is now only 5% down from 9%. But that's still better than buying your tickets on the train. That's gone up to about an extra $5. Can Mamaroneck Beach and Yacht Club build seasonal housing on its waterfront? Well, the village of Mamaroneck is no closer to a decision after receiving a consultant report that residents decried as flawed in data and conclusion. Public criticism was so harsh it prompted the Mamaroneck Village Board to unanimously agree to appoint a committee to find a second consultant. Residents opposed to the project say it violates the spirit and intent of the local, local water revitalization program, which is grounded in an attempt to prevent water clubs from becoming residents. The village of Mamaroneck got some good news from the, state, the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation. The DEC has determined that a former Freon contaminated site in Mamaroneck no longer possesses a toxic risk and should be removed from a list of hazardous sites. The site was the subject of an 18-month cleanup under the DEC's supervision. If approved, there will be co uh, continued groundwater treatment and groundwater monitoring to ensure future protection of the site. As the New York State budget process gets underway, State Assemblyman George Latimer, who represents the Sound Shore area, is bringing the process home. On March 3rd, a public hearing was held for residents to express concerns with any budget issue in order for him to learn what residents really care about. The hearing aired live on this channel, LMC-TV, and will be rebroadcast. For dates and times, please check the LMC-TV website at www.lmc-tv.org and click on Programs and Schedules, or you can look for it in the Larchmont Gazette or the Sound in Town Report. On March 23rd, Kids for World Health, a nonprofit organization, will be hosting an expo at the Homics Middle School in Larchmont at 6.15 p.m. 
The expo is being held to raise awareness about the world's most neglected diseases such as sleeping sickness and malaria and the lack of access to medicine in Africa. The event will include an opportunity for guests to spin the wheel of misfortune and learn more about the diseases and cures. Another highlight will, of the evening will be the film produced by Brad Garfield about the mission and work of Kids for World Health. The organization has raised $25,000 through donations, bake sales, and speaking engagements and will be presenting Dr. Janin, Chief Medical Officer of the World Health Organization, with the check. The money will go to the construction of a Kids for World Health pediatric wing and school in the Tambura region of southern Sudan. Additional funds will be donated to Dr. Richer, who originated the program for treating sleeping sickness in the region. The KFWH was originated in 2000 by the third grade students at Chatsworth Avenue School and is now comprised of students from Chatsworth Avenue Elementary School, Homix Middle School, and Mamernik High School. All members of the community are welcome to come to the expo. For more information, please visit Kids for World Health, the Kids for World Health website at www.kfwh.org. Here with recent news from the town of Mamaroneck is Larchmont Mamaroneck Community News reporter Brad Martz. At the February 16th Town of Mamaroneck board meeting, the board was notified of a possible construction project that could prove to be very costly. The town and village of Mamaroneck and the town of Harrison are part of the Westchester Joint Waterworks or WJWW. By state mandate, the WJWW may be required to construct a $37 million water filtration plant at Rye Lake by September 2007. The problem attributed to this mandate can be traced back to 1991 when WJWW was not in compliance with federal regulations regarding the time chlorine is present in water before it reaches its first user. WJWW has spent $10 million in improvements since 91 and it established a filtration avoidance agreement with the state health department. The state, however, now claims that this agreement is not valid and is therefore pushing this mandate. What could this mean for residents? If this mandate stands, water bills could rise by 38% annually. To keep this from taking place, Board Supervisor O'Keefe is encouraging residents to lobby state officials on behalf of the WJWW. This construction project, however, was not the only thing discussed at the board meeting. A new law effective March 31, 2005 was passed. This notification law was unanimously passed and will place full responsibility for notification regarding land use decisions coming up on the agendas of the zoning and planning boards on the applicants. Any homeowner that requests zoning variance must follow the following process. Two weeks prior to the zoning board hearing, homeowners must mail hearing information to 1. All neighbors within 300 feet of the site, 2. All residents on the street, and 3. All residents adjacent to the property. The applicant will also be required to post a sign on the property notifying the public of the impending zone board hearing. Lastly, the new law also requires the town website to post agendas for specific projects for land use, which will be going in front of the board. For Larchmont Mamarina Community News, I'm Brad Martz. The money is flowing at the Mamarina Schools Foundation. I sat down with its president, Sabrina Fiddleman, to get the details. The Mamarina Schools Foundation is a nonprofit organization that's been operating in the community for nine years now, whose sole objective is to raise money, private funds in the community, and offer that money as grants to the staff and faculty in the district. I understand that you've recently received a very large grant, $100,000 from one donor. Yes. It's very exciting. It's very exciting. It's our first directed donation. We were approached uh, by an anonymous donor. They wish to remain anonymous, although I have to say I would love to scream from the rooftops because <laughs> they're so very generous and so committed to public education. But they had a specific objective in mind, and that was to benefit um, early readers. Primary literacy was, is there particular interest. And so we put them together with uh, administration in the district who crafted uh, a wonderful program that actually has been written up in the most recent Know Your Schools. Um, and the description is a much more articulate one than, than what I will offer here. But um, it's the program that we've crafted for the first year. And this 
theoretically should be a multi-year program, which is even more exciting. But the program is a three-part program. It begins in the pre-K program, uh, which is where the district's neediest young children are. They're uh, economically disadvantaged and special needs children. And they will receive a very exciting science-based literacy program which is very exciting. It's a sort of new, a cutting edge educational philosophy that science and literacy are so closely tied. Uh, there'll also be a part of the program that teaches the teachers in the district all the way up through second grade in all the buildings to use a phonics based uh, literacy is program. That the Orton-Gillingham program? The Orton-Gillingham method. Mm -hmm. And uh, the third phase is to provide those same teachers all the way sec through second grade on a test basis at first with some software, uh, Palm Pilots actually, that will allow them to monitor and keep tabs on the, the progress that their students make. It's fascinating. Fascinating That's very program. exciting. Yeah. Now, how much money has the foundation raised this year? We're actually, some of you viewers will see this before our award ceremony, which takes place on Monday, March 7th, some after, but I still can't say <laughs> exactly, because we unveil our, our okay. giving on that evening. That. But we gave the district, um, in uh, undirected funds, $217,000 for this current school year, and we are, have been able to raise more money for next year. Well, that's so great. that's very exciting. Plus the hundred thousand dollars. Plus the hundred thousand. That's very exciting. Yep. Now there are some events coming up that the community can get involved in. Why don't you tell us yes. about those? Well, the first one is Monday, March seventh. It's our award ceremony. It's when we actually make the awards. And where uh, and when the is grants. that? The exactly grants. It's at seven thirty in the Homics Auditorium, and we'd love to have as many of your viewers as are welcome as are willing to come. They're all welcome. We actually are in a bigger venue this year. Uh, we'd previously been in a smaller location. It had been an intimate and very moving experience for all of us, and so we thought we'd like to share it with the broader section, you know, cross-section of the community, so everybody is welcome. That's the first. Then the following weekend, March 12th and 13th, in the Post Road Gym at the high school, we're sponsoring an antiques and collectibles fair. Now that's an annual event. It's an annual event. We've been sponsoring it for three or four years, I can't remember, although it's been in the district for much longer than that. Um, and we get antiques and collectibles dealers, and it's a great fun event, and the kids love it, and we're happy to have them. So that's the, so, uh, the 12th, 12th and 13th, 13th at the Post Road Gym mm -hmm. in the high school. From 10 to 5, both days. Okay, and there's an admission fee. There is an admission fee. It's $5, but it goes, 100% of that goes directly into grants okay. for next, for the following school year. Well, that's exciting. So. And then you have a big gala coming up as yes, well. Yes, indeed we do. Our third annual gala will be on Saturday evening, May 21st, again at Mamaroneck Beach and Yacht Club. Um, invitations will come out sometime in April, but for people who are not donors to the foundation and who would like to be invited, they can feel free to call our office. I think that you've posted all of our well, why don't information. You just tell us, what is the phone number and the, the website? The Mamaroneck Schools Foundation's telephone number is 698-9079, and our website is www.mamaroneckschoolsfoundation, all one word, dot org, and you can reach us either of those ways. And anyone who just wants to make a donation can find out the information of how to do Absolutely. that there. Absolutely, and anybody who'd like to come and work with us, we'd be thrilled to have. Well, that's great. Thanks so much for coming, My and uh, we'll hope to see you at the award ceremony and the auction, the um, collectibles um, show, and the gala. Yeah, the gala, great. Thank you. Jazz, Mamarin, Jazz in Mamaroneck, Larchmont Mamaroneck Community News reporter Brad Martz tells us where and when. For all you music lovers, on March 17, 2005, the Mamaroneck School District will be putting on its District Jazz Festival at Homics Auditorium. The jazz ensembles will include students ranging from grades 6 through 12. The Homics Middle School will have its Wednesday morning jazz band and twice a week jazz band on the bill. From the high school, both the A and B bands will be playing with the vocal ensemble singing various jazz selections with multicultural influences. So head on over to Homics Auditorium on the 17th and support the next generation of jazz enthusiasts. You can't beat the price, the concert is free. For Larchmont Mamaroneck Community News, I'm Brad Martz. Larchmont Mamaroneck Community News reporter Imania Karasun tells us how high school students are preparing for their future. Hi and welcome. The topic of today is students in school and what they plan to pursue as a career in the future. 
I had interviewed one college student and one high school student. The student from Americ High School says that she wanted to be a teacher and major in forensics and mathematics. She had chosen this as her profession because she believes she's, a, she's good at these two subjects and she's capable of handling the work. This is a great profession because we need a lot of confident and concerned teachers to help the young minds of students who want to learn. The college student that I interviewed is a young lady who attends Baruch College in Manhattan. She's in her freshman year of college and she plans on majoring in economics to become a stockbroker. Since the age of 12, her uncle has influenced her into this field of the stock market. She loves it. She's interested in learning about the economy and how it works. She also loves the constant pace of the job. She loves to move around and get a lot of work done instead of being bored. In her junior and senior year of high school, she has done many internships for Merrill Lynch in order to get herself prepared and started in the field of her career. So as you can see, students are getting themselves prepared and organized for the future. They have an idea of what they want to achieve and become. So start early, prepare yourself, and let's all get focused. Be or not to be at an upcoming event. Larchmont Marinette Community News reporter Amy Schachtel tells us why you should be at this event. I am joined here with Sam, Jesse, and Teddy, members of the Semi-Royal Shakespeare Company. Sam, I'm going to start off with you. I'd like you to tell me just a little bit about the company, and then we'll get into more details of what you're doing. Well, uh, the, Shakes the Semi-Royal Shakespeare Company uh, was founded by D. O'Brien um, a long time ago, I think about 31 years. Uh, and what she does is every year she puts on a, a couple Shakespeare plays uh, performed by students like us. Um, and uh, they're all of the Shakespeare variety, and uh, they're good. Great. <laughs> and Jesse, how many performances or how many shows have you been involved in? Well, I personally uh, started the company when I was in my freshman year, so I've been in four shows. But um, Dee actually does two shows a year, so there's, there's been eight shows since I joined the company. I've been in four of them. <laughs> and Dee, have you always enjoyed acting? Yeah, it's definitely something I, I always really love to do. I think by joining Shakespeare, it helped me discover that it was something I was really passionate about and, and really love to do. Because now, I mean, I couldn't imagine my life without this company, which sounds really corny, but it's not. <laughs> no, that's great. And Ted, <coughs> um, the acting that you've been doing with the Royal semi-royal Shakespeare right. Company. Very good acting. Right. I'm sure it's very good. <laughs> I'm right. looking forward to seeing you. When do the performances begin? Um, well, they actually begin next week. Um, and they're at the Hummock School. Yeah, I believe uh, they start on March 8th. Uh -huh. And uh, the first couple performances are actually for uh, middle school students who come and watch us in the Hummocks Middle School Auditorium. And the two shows that you'll be doing? Um, I am going to be in Romeo and Juliet, and the other show is The Taming of the Shrew this year. And both are, shall be fun. Oh, I'm sure they will. Yeah. Can you tell me when the performances will actually be? Um, I can try to remember. Um, it should be, uh, they're going to be the 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, and 13th, I believe. And the of ones March. Of March. Yes. Correct. And the ones for the public um, should be at 7 o'clock on the weekdays for the night showings. And then it's actually, sorry, don't want to interrupt. No, um, that's okay. That's okay. The, our show, <coughs> Taming of the Shrew, opens uh, Wednesday the 9th at yeah, right. 7.30. Right, 7.30, you know, 7 if you want to be, Okay, you know, and tickets are sold in advance? I think the box office opens an hour before uh, the show. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, uh, you can go on the school website, and there's a link to a poster that will tell you how, what number to call to get tickets. Sam, you and I were talking before, and one thing I found out from you is that not only do you enjoy acting, but you enjoy production. Were you involved in any of the production of these plays that we're going to see? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> does does Dee O'Brien allow uh, her actors to get into production and learn that aspect? Uh, well, yeah. Uh, Dee has about, about two or three stage managers uh, for each show, mm -hmm. uh, and they manage production. And, you know, the performers really have a lot of say uh, as to uh, how the production goes. Um, you know, what props they want to use, how they want to do the staging. It's very open-ended. And how much liberty can you take with Shakespeare? Do you have to be word for word? Mm. An interesting question. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, Shakespeare was a funny guy. Um, <laughs> and we all know him to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Romeo and Juliet, great comedy. Um, <laughs> really, we try to know it as uh, best we can, but since 
some of us are such amazing actors, um, we try to cover up our mistakes. Um, but no. we, we don't make mistakes. I understand. We <laughs> want to come and see all of your amazing acting. And once again, the performances will be at the Homics. Yes. Uh, and the number that they can call, do you know the number offhand? Not offhand. Well, uh, we no. will get that number. But there's a website that they yeah, can contact Yeah, I can go through well. like the actual, which show is on which day. Please yeah. do. OK. All right. Um, we open Wednesday the 9th. Um, and that's Taming of the Shrew, which is the show I'm in, at 7.30. Um, Thursday the 10th is Romeo and Juliet. Friday the 11th is Taming of the Shrew again, and that's at 8. Mm -hmm. And Saturday the 12th is Romeo and Juliet again, and that's at, I believe, 2 is your matinee, or 1? I have no idea. All right. <laughs> Just be there. And yeah. 8 p.m. is their night show, and that's the last of Romeo and Juliet, and then we close Sunday the 13th with Taming of the Shrew at 1 and 7. Well, I wish you all the very best. I, I don't really want to say break a leg. I want you to all be <laughs> happy and not hurt, but do very well. Sam, pleasure. You too. Jesse, great. <laughs> Teddy, you're terrific. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and everybody should please go. And that's it for this week's edition of Larchmont Mamaroneck Community News. If you want to see this news show again, you can. It's on every weekday night at 7 p.m. We record one show each week, and it's replayed on this channel, LMC TV, channel 75. Or, if you want to request to see it, you can. Call LMC TV after 4 in the afternoon during the week at 698-6808 and ask to see the new show. They'll try to put it on at a time that's convenient for you to watch. And this, re and this reminder, this news program is an all-volunteer effort, and we could use a few more volunteers either behind the scenes or as a reporter. Or maybe you'd like to shoot videos. Whatever the case, we need you. In short, if you want to volunteer to help us put this program on, we have something for you to do. Stop by some Thursday night in the LMC TV studios and see how we do what we do. The LMC TV studios are in the Mamaroneck High School, the Palmer Avenue side, just up the, just up the stairs across from the landmark Walter's Hot Dog Stand. We get things started around 7 p.m. and we would love to see you. Also, if you have any comments or suggestions or some video of an event that you'd like us to put on this news show, bring it to the studio or write to us at Larchmont Mamaroneck Community News in care of LMC TV, 1 Library Lane, Mamaroneck, New York, 10543. Thanks again for watching Larchmont Mamaroneck Community News. I'm Kate Fahey. And I'm Maura Carlin. See you next week.